Welcome back to Paranormal Perspective. I'm John Lorden. And I'm Christy Arnhart. And with me is the John Lorden bobblehead. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you guys. Oh, Look, it's not bad. That was one of the... I'm telling you, his wife gives fantastic presents. Yeah. It's before I went, you know, I, I dropped a few pounds recently. It's, it's a little before that, but hey, it's, it's still, that's me. Goodness. <laughs> well, well, here we are, another week, another paranormal mystery to look into, Christy. Is that a, a fair explanation of what we're looking at today? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And today I want to ask everybody, how strong is the power of your belief? Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Today like we're going to be talking about Alexandra David Neal. She actually created what's called a tulpa in the 1920s. Now, tulpa is a Sanskrit word that means a construct. It's not a physical entity. It's a non-physical entity created from our imagination that eventually takes on a life of its own through the energy of thoughts and belief. Okay. You Do I have a picture of her? This is this her? Yes. Okay, let me bring up the yes. picture for everybody. The first picture is her as a teenager. And okay. isn't she incredible looking? Yeah. yeah. I love, this is my favorite picture. I know I've seen it before, but I just love the way she looks. Mm -hmm. Now, she was born October 24th of 1868, a Scorpio. No, I've, I've already done this wrong. That's all right. Yeah, 1868. And she lived to be 101. Oh, Seriously. Wow. She died in 1969. Wow. Wow. I cannot then, imagine living yeah, that life. That's unheard of. She was, well, 101. And to see so much happen in that time. Mm -hmm. She was a Belgian French explorer. She was a spiritualist, a Buddhist, an anarchist, an opera singer, and a writer. So, yeah, she had a very eventful life. Yeah. She really did. Now, She's most known for her 1924 visit, visit to Lhasa, Tibet. That was at a time when Tibet would not let any foreigners into the country at all. And she actually made it in and got in good with the Dalai Lama and was invited to stay. And she studied with Buddhist monks the whole time she was there. And she's actually the person who brought the concept of tulpas to the West. Okay. She wrote over 30 books she it's i can't go on about this woman enough i'm gonna have to stop and tell you more about this now tibetan buddhists take the concept of tulpas very seriously for them it's a spiritual discipline designed to teach the student about the disintegrated barrier between the material and the immaterial worlds and show them that what we consider reality is actually a magical illusion now for buddhists a tulpa can also be a trap if they ever start to believe that their tulpa, you know, is more than just a hallucination, they automatically fail as monks and they're asked to leave. Hmm. What is what what is the viewpoint of what a tulpa is? Like, is this a uh, like a spiritual journey that they go on? Is this almost like a dream state of some kind or is it like a physical object? Sometimes it's an object. Sometimes it's a person. It's whatever they imagine their tulpa to be, whatever they want to create. Okay. They'll okay. start by, well, it's mostly meditation, you know, and it, at one point, 20 Buddhist monks were said to have meditated so hard for so long that they created a tulpa. Now, after you fill this thought form with enough of your belief and energy, sometimes it's actually able to solidify and become its own person. They have their own thoughts, their own feelings. It's like you will this person into existence. Hmm. Now, the tulpa was alive for a little while, and then the monks were forced to deconstruct it, basically kill it, which took them another six months of nothing but meditation and concentration to tear the, far the thought form down. Okay. Now, this could have just been an experiment they wanted to do to see what they could get away with, right? But I've also wondered, what if this tulpa is somebody from history that we know of? that caused like a great upheaval or something. And, you know, the, the person that they created to be their hero turned out to be this horrible person that they had to destroy. Are you I don't saying know anything that the monks it. made Hitler? Is that what I just heard, Christy? Well, it's... 
I mean, seriously, I thought about this. I was like, why would they have to kill it? If it was, you know, this person that they created, shouldn't it be allowed to live its life? But evidently it did something it was not supposed to. Okay. Now, this is still practice today. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try not to be rude about this because it sounds like a lot of crap to me. Modern practitioners call themselves tulpamancers. They use the term to will an imaginary friend or object into existence. Mm -hmm. Now, when David Neal created her tulpa, she created him to look like a fat old friar. Okay. Before long, other people started to see the friar because he followed her everywhere she went. It was so bad that people in her entourage would ask her, who is this man? Do you know this man? And she'd be like, yeah, you know, just ignore him for now. He's okay. And eventually he had enough energy within himself to try to pull away from her, which is something that naturally happens once they they have enough of that. When he did, he turned out to be malevolent and did some things that were not pretty. So she had to dismantle her thought form and get rid of it. I always thought, oh, it's tulpas to me. Think about the Greek gods. You know, you have all of these myths and legends and you have an entire population that is believing in this every day. They think about it. They believe in it. Sure. Well, there's power to thought, you know, there's power to this belief. Oh, how many of us have uh, have had childhood imaginary friends? Like, yeah. And, and right. And, and to a point where it's like, I mean, you could spend hours with them. Uh, they could start developing their own personality in some way. Uh, I have these weird things with, um, <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> mops and brooms when I was a kid. And <laughs> I would... I would turn them upside down and almost use them like a puppet. And at some point they started scaring me because think about like, what would a mop look like when you turn it upside down? Like almost like cousin it or something like it's just a bunch of hair. Doesn't really have features, doesn't have eyes and just the movement of it. Like I could literally scare myself with a mop turned upside down. <laughs> Maybe I was experimenting with my tulpa. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Well, what are these other pictures all, I have, Christy? Well, they are her at different stages in her life. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's check these out. So this picture is actually when she was in Lhasa in 1924. Awesome. And this wow. is her. Yeah. This is her in Tibet in 1933. I was going to say, clearly Tibetan gear there. Yeah. It's... I, I, I really like this woman. I think she was a trailblazer, even if it's a little kooky. But so, there's a lot. I find a lot of truth in the whole Tulpa thing. Okay. You know, what if the supernatural is just a manifestation of our, imag our collective imaginations? We can't find any real proof of it. Oh, my gosh. A cat latched onto me. But <laughs> he did. He wants attention. You were getting too close to the truth, Christy. <sighs> and cats, you know, they're supposed to walk in our world and the other world. So there is, who knows? There is certainly a truth in what you're saying because any type of paranormal experience needs to be observed. So mm -hmm. there is, there is an innate humanity that has to occur with paranormal experiences because you have to have some way of measuring, viewing, mm -hmm. taking it in in some way. So. To your point, like, do those types of experiences, can they come from our spirits or how we're feeling about certain things? And yeah, I think absolutely. Like, I, I, I do I too. I mean, what do you do if you want something bad enough? You you put it out there in the universe. You focus yeah. on it. You work toward it. Oh, yeah. I mean, think, Relationships? think about, oh, everything. Yeah. Think about Slender Man. All these little urban legends that we make up online. You yeah. know, they start to take on a life of their own through our belief. Slender Man. So how far can we go? Yeah, Slender Man is actually a really good example of that because of the actual attacks that the young girls did, like emulating mm -hmm. that belief structure. <clears throat> and yeah, it's it's almost not like a shared delusion at that point, but kind of like a shared nightmare at some point. Mm -hmm. So is the question I mean that we're going to put to the audience, do tulpas actually exist? 
Does that sound I fair? would say that, yes. I mean, do you believe in the power of your belief that much? Because tulpas are always something I have found so interesting. You know, the power of thought's incredible. Okay, so I'm saying, do you believe in tulpas, a physical expression of your beliefs? Right? Yeah. Isn't that fair? That's okay. fair. Yes or no. We're asking the community. Let's give them about a minute. Um, while you were looking into this and kind of learning about it, so we have the example of one being like a friar, almost like, so it's it's very much a human person that's following around. Was there other examples that you noted? Like, I would think there would probably be a lot of kind of like animal-based ones, especially just with the Well, what I ran into were a bunch of people who said they could create tulpas and they're just playing inside their head. Okay. Um, one of the famous ones that I know about, and I was thinking about bringing this one to everybody next week. It's called the Philip Experiment. And this is where they got a group of eclectic people together. They really didn't have anything in common with each other. Okay. And they thought of a person. They made up his entire background. They drew this person. They knew down to his bones who he was. And then they started to conduct seances and experiments to see if they could get their thought form to communicate with them. And there's footage. There's audio. There's everything. Sounds like a teaser for next week. I think, yeah, we definitely ah. should press press in on that one, especially because we got some physical evidence to review. Um, I don't want to freak everyone out, but my tulpa is actually here right now. There we go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a good ball. Oh, my God. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at your tulpa just happened too. Here he is. Oh my goodness. He's so goodness. mad now. Wow. <laughs> he's, handsome, he's like, handsome put me boy. Down. All right, we are ending the poll and it literally uh, it's it's moving a little bit. I'm just going to let it hang in there a little more. Christy, uh th I think this is episode 3, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And this is your first what I would consider your first win. 52% say ah. yes they do believe in some physical expression of beliefs and that can happen and quite honestly you've got my vote too yeah i'm with you awesome i think there's something to that Good job, Christy. It, well, it took you three you shows, knocked one out of the park, and we've got a teaser for next week. I'm already looking forward to that one. Oh, uh, yeah. That one's something else. Yeah. Well, next week we're going to see, am I going to believe it or not? Join us again as Christy presents yet another paranormal perspective. Ooh.